Hello and welcome to another episode of FCC Fan TV. Nick here as always with Cody. Hey guys, how we doing? Cody, coming off a little yeah, very I don't I don't know the adjective to use here, but disappointing one nothing loss at West End Stadium to the New England Revolution. Yeah. Well, here, let's let's spin this a little bit then. Uh, we'll start off with like a better note of this was the first match you got to go to. I did. Um, it was enjoyable. I chose not to. <laughs> um, so I could watch Chelsea in the Champions League final. Um, and I'll be there. I'll be there at the, on the 19th. But all I want to say at all this is how was your first game experience at Weston Stadium? It was fantastic. I really enjoyed my time in the Bailey there. Uh, nice to kind of get some cheering in again just be close to the action and just see the team up close i mean i was lucky i went to the first game down in nashville so i'd already seen them in person but from about i don't know a mile away up in the third bowl at nissan stadium so it was kind of just nice to get that loud and that was only with eleven thousand people i think that first game of the 19th is just going to be great i'm looking forward to it so there at least yeah some positive out of this went down checked out the pitch again for a game just fun as always remembered soccer on every tv for the first couple of mls games it was great and then rolled into tql stadium and wish we could have come home with a winner but overall the overall experience of the day was fantastic good 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 so you know start on a little bit of a lighter note and then, and then we could talk about the match so I guess well, let's lead into it there. I'm just going to switch over. We'll run through the match facts first today off of lovely MLS soccer website, which I don't think tracks shots correctly because I was just looking at it based on one of the pictures I was uploading earlier. They didn't even have like one of the shots Vasquez had, so I was very confused. But we'll flip over there and see if, if the rest of it sounds right to you. I can tell you for on MLS, when I was looking up, statistics after the match on mls website and who scored they both had us at 13 and new york or new york <laughs> new england at 26 yeah so maybe maybe it's just a little shot chart down below that was odd but yeah. new england one possession this game 56 to 43 26 shots to our 13 double to sub only six of those for new england were on goal so a little bit better there but we also blocked 10 of their shots uh Obviously, they outpassed us by close to 100. Accuracy for them was better. They had 13 corners to our four, and I believe all four of ours came after the 80th minute in this game. I don't think the first one was there, and we kind of just put them all right at the end. Uh, 19 crosses to 12. Not much offsides today. Vasquez was only in for five minutes, so that makes sense. Duels won. That's a huge teller, which was one of my takeaways from this game, was that we were very poor on 50-50 balls and sort of the second chance. Um, that reflects that one right there. Tackles won. Seems about right. Saves. Seems about right, too. Each, I mean, honestly, only three for Vermeer seems low, but I guess they did only have six on target, but it seems like he was flying around everywhere today. Not game day. Uh, clearances, fouls, yellows, <laughs> reds. Everything about this reflects my experience. One, being there. Two, rewatching the part of the stream that we were able to. Obviously, there were some uh, technical difficulties with the stream. Only had about the 30th minute on the 90th. So it was a little unfortunate not to actually get to rewatch the fun 10 minutes between the 20th and 30th, where I think we did pretty well. Makadia had a couple nice shots on goal. But everything about these match facts. Uh, nothing here stands out to me. Well, I guess this passing network stands out to me a week pull here with how thin our lines are compared to how thick theirs are all around the park. And just kind of shows that they control that possession, dictated it, and played the passes where we wanted to go. And we were not very... We, well, we lined up in our 5-3-2, so we weren't really sitting here trying to possess the ball. But it was a little... A little disappointing from that aspect to not see us maybe at home go for it a little bit more. Um, quick note on that. I guess we did. We can talk about this. Uh, there was a tactical shift in the second half where he we went in more of that 4-3-3. Danko slid into the defensive mid instead of right center back. And I think we looked a little bit better going forward in the second half. Obviously, we gave up the goal, but it wasn't from open play or anything like that. It was off the uh, free kick 
about halfway between the corner flag and the 18 at Buxus put in. Um, that's the main highlight, I guess, if you want to call it that, of this game. It very disjointed. I'm not sure how much you on the rewatch thought that, but I my main takeaway while I was there was that this was probably one of the worst ref games I've seen in a long time for both teams. That's, that was my main um, takeaway. <clears throat> From the officiating yeah. side, it just felt weird. I think it was bad all it's around. It's hard for me to blame. Well, it's hard for me to blame MLS refs because they're just bad in general. You know, it's like blaming college basketball refs. Like you just know they're bad. There's no point in it. You just got to half your battle in MLS is beating the refs. Um, so I don't disagree with you, but it's just kind of part of the game. It is at this point, unfortunately, because our refing's horrible. I I, I was um, more in this one. It's not necessarily that the ref beat us. It's that he. The game felt quite disjointed, even being there, like in person, not watching on TV, because the players on each team didn't quite know where the line was, and things were being called differently multiple times against both teams, and then not called. And you could kind of, one thing I saw in my rewatch, the frustration, especially after we went down, it felt like players kind of lost the cool a little bit. They were getting real antsy, arguing for every call, not just for trailing, but it looks like all game, it looks some pent up. Uh, I don't know if you could see it on the broadcast, but Buchanan was chirping the Bailey for a lot of the game. Anytime he came down, he got booed off or one of like either he flopped for one, didn't get the call and complained and he got yelled at and then he kind of got chirped at him on the way out the side. So that was kind of a once we get back to being in the stadium, just kind of things you don't you kind of miss kind of that interaction with the yeah. players. So that was cool. But it was just it felt like a very sloppy game, especially from us. Um yeah, and it was. Uh, so on my rewatch, our I'm going to use your word that you kept saying of disjointed. Our, uh, we were extremely disjointed in short passing situations. If we got the ball in the – well, it, the whole first 15, 20 minutes was just uh, – New England could have been th- up 3 to 4 nothing really, really quick. Um, but any time the ball was at our feet, and we're like, all right, like it's short pass forward. It was either intercepted or it was, it got to the receiving end and a, a clean tackle was made and the ball was lost. The, the turnovers and the, and the, the on play turnovers and the uh, passes that were intercepted, I, I was, I, I had no words for it. I was like, I'm kind of happy that the, you know, Unfortunately, it was the first 30 minutes, so the 20 to 30 I could have seen, but I wasn't disappointed after rewatching it that I missed the first first or the uh, first 20 minutes of the match because I think I just would have been beyond frustrated. Definitely. So I, I kind of I kind of expected it. I talked about it when I was there with I was down there with our friend Tim, and I was like, we're probably gonna every time we sit back in this five three two, we just seem to sort of try to weather the storm for the first 15 20 minutes, kind of. And then we kind of try to come out of that shell a little bit, hit quickly. And we kind of went the same approach here. And it's one of the reasons I don't really like when we play this formation, because it's at this point, I know what we're trying to do. And it's just, despite us playing a, I'm going to air quote here, defensive formation, we don't really do a good job defensively. And I think that also leads to the issues in possession. Because I had my note here is after that rewatch, the way we line up with Lucho and Moderita on that left side, it's just not not good with the defense because they, they kind of went down. I had Bayern Buchanan, the right back and right wing for New England this time, went right at them both. And Lucho kind of – and then also Lucio being there on the left, he's not that safety valve then when we're trying to get possession of the ball and break because if we went on that right side – He's got to, if we're trying to put him back in the middle of the field, he's got to sprint over, and then that just leaves a hole in if we can get those quick turnovers, which we weren't able to get possession. So they're able to recycle it right back around and keep going at Moderita and Lucho. And they, and honestly, for me, this was Moderita's probably worst game uh, FCC. Yeah, and honestly, they said, uh, I believe it came out yesterday, that he was kind of working with an injury. So in my rewatch, I was trying to see if maybe I could see something. And he just, he definitely looked maybe a little bit labored in the second half. Uh, just kind of slow moving, getting around, and considering how much he usually is sprinting back and forth, he wasn't necessarily going his full bore. So I wonder if he just maybe strained something. I we haven't heard anything about the severity of that, but with this formation, well, and this is where you hope he doesn't play. He's for not Costa with Rica, Costa Rica honestly. right now. 
he didn't make the he didn't okay. make the trip because of this is what i pretty sure i saw am i just making things up I'm pretty sure i saw that he's not there Cruz still went um but this i think that's one of the issues though with why we're still despite playing this defensive formation give up so many chances uh lucho for all what he brings to the team is uh, he'll try but he's much better when he's or pressing out of the 442 up top or suited to his skill set just kind of just what he can do like new england's a such a good team they came in they saw it and they they went right to work on it all that first half and i just it, and there's nothing really I don't, i'm not sure if this is the formation they're going to keep with this they're going to keep players lined up these positions defensively if it's going to change because i just don't think personnel wise it's going to be able to handle it and then it kind of also leads to the issues with this game how many shots were just wide open at kind of the top of the box so they weren't the best positions but i mean mcnamara ripped a couple that went right over the bar and because our midfield doesn't close down in the middle because we only have two of them and they're kind of stretched so there's spaces in between them and then Lucho's out there on the left. So we're just really asking Cruz Kubo to pretty much mark anybody that's in the middle. Center backs don't step up because they got guys like it's just I, I don't want to use it. It's just unorganized of what it seems like what we're gonna do and we just want to shell, but if we don't close them down eventually guys are gonna put those long range shots in. And we got I think very lucky with the score line being the way it is today. We had our chances, but this easily could have been a three to one, four to one kind of game. Yeah, there's nothing really more to say about it. I'm going to take another positive spin on the day, though, and kind of highlight from about the 20, 19th to the 25th minute of Lacadia being a designated player mm. <laughs> like, and looking like a designated player. Um, so he had a great shot in the 19th. Uh, it was a ball put over by Kubo. That one was Kubo. No. I do not remember. No. Oh, without boy. getting the rewatch. But... I don't remember either. Somebody put the ball up and he did what he's actually done well for us, which is get up and get the ball. It was a long pass over the top, brought it down, dribbled it, took a good shot, and just it just didn't hit. But I mean, that's what we paid him to do, and he was doing it. And then about what, a minute later, two minutes later, uh, this one was Kubo. Kubo did a little chip over to Lucho in the corner. Lucio does a one-two touch right into Lacadia. Lacadia rips a left-footed shot for the upper 90, and it just missed. Those are the type of shots we want to see Lacadia take. And for how bad defensively defensively we looked this match, the Brenner and Lacadia up top worked when we were able to get the ball to them. Because Brenner also had a few shots. There was one, I forget, it was in the second half, where he probably should have passed it off to Zhao, who was running down the side. And he decided to just rip it from right outside the box. It was a good shot. I, I think we would have had a better shot if he would have just one touched it over to Zhao and Zhao could have put a shot on goal. Um, I, I want to say on that, but I, for the most I almost part, took that as one of Nick's screenshots of the week. And then I kind of watching it again, there was a very, a very split second where Zhao was probably open, but he actually got marked like almost yeah. immediately. So I don't think he made a wrong decision there and probably would have been better. I wasn't saying it was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's just more of like, Okay, I should say I was, that was another outlet choice. He decided to rip the shot, which I was fine with. Um, but I will say, once again, that Brenner and Lacadia looked really good up top when we had possession in their final third, which wasn't very often during, throughout the whole match. Yeah. And I, that's, I keep harping on it, but I think if we're going to play the back three, which I'm not against, because we really don't have a good defensive midfielder, so it makes sense. A, a slight, I feel like a slight tweak of personnel and formation with it and who responsibilities are where would yield better results, maybe not defensively, but even there. But offensively, like I said, if you played more of the 3-4-1-2 the and kept Lucho in the middle of the field, kind of like a, a four across the back and one of Moderita could be that midfielder that drops back in and we go to maybe a four, four, two defensively with it and have Brenner come back in on one of the wings and chase like it. I, 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 I really don't know what to say at this point. Cause it seems like this might be the lineup going forward. I do like the four, three, three, especially in the second half, we look much more dangerous going forward in it. And I think now with Cameron and Viasia, we have the center backs to be able to pull that off. 
So, I don't know. It's just, it, it's slow, slow steps, and I hesitate to want to take too many negatives away from this, considering this is the best team in the East we played. But when you're at home, you, you want to try to be able to dictate the pace more, and lining up defensively at home just always leaves kind of a bitter taste. This kind of thought, just go after going in, it's like, man, I, I get it. I get where we are. I get where they are right now as like teams, but you, it's just you never want to see it. Yeah. Well, and it didn't help us. <clears throat> we just got this was luck. This wasn't oh we we played a different defensive formation, which is why we only lost one nothing. No, we got lucky. Like you already touched on, this could have been three, four, five to one. They just happened to miss. <laughs> like there is. So it's not even like the defensive formation worked. We just, this was a pure luck game. I mean, not, they still got the three points, but it, 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 this could have been over within 15 minutes. And actually. I will say, I mean, they just, I do want to give a, like a, like a positive nod here. Vermeer was immense today. Made, I don't think he put a foot wrong anywhere. He came out for every no. good ball, he was reading every play. Man, considering how many shots you could they tell let he him was... rip at him, like, well, and you could tell he was frustrated on the goal that was scored, and I don't blame him for missing it at all. He was frustrated at his defense, mm. so I don't know how much he, I rewatched the goal a few I've times. I've got a screen cap and, for later too when we go over this. Well, but, I said, do you want to bring it up? Do you want to bring it up yeah, now, or flip over here? I got to find which one I saved it under. And I don't know where you took the screenshot, but I, let me try to remember this off. It was Viasia, Matarita, and Zhao. And they all whiffed on their marks. If, I don't know where your screenshot is, but there yeah. are three New England jerseys that went up for that ball, and any one of them could have got a head That's on what it I to put, put it in. And our guys are just standing. Uh, my note there. for it was too many unmarked bodies. You have three New England players in the middle of 4FC, and Cameron's looking back, Moderita's looking back, Jow's looking back. Uh, Buxus made a really nice cut in. Just pretty much lost Moderita and went up and got it. But yeah, that could have been any one of those New England players' goals. Like, yep. it was – and that's especially disappointing considering how we've been getting beat is – that's what I was kind of – like, this rewatch, I was like, man, it's some of the same mistakes I kept seeing over and over again. Like, getting beat on set pieces like this, losing guys in the air, not closing down, uh, like, guys at the top of the box. Even – I have another one we can go over later, but – like Zhao gets beat over the top of the air, kind of looks up, loses man and ball, and gets turned. And it's just like, it feels like we got a little bit of fool's gold with only walking out of here, getting beat one nothing at home. So like, um, well, Zhao Zhao was extremely disappointed to me defensively this match, and I've kind of been hard on him the past few matches, but he just hasn't done anything to make me think like, okay, maybe I'm just being too hard. So. I don't even remember that point you're talking about, but there was one where he had the ball at his feet. Uh, I would say back in our midfield. Um, he, get, he turns it over, he gets tackled, and then he stood there. And I literally watched New England take the possession and move their guys up. And I forget what they – they got a shot off of it. I don't know you know, which one out of their 26. But he didn't even move – I mean, not even five feet. Like, oh, okay, there's another guy, you know, marking that guy. Just stood there, and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? And once again, offensively poor, honestly, overall. Like, his crosses, most of them. Like, I, when he decides he's going to cross it, he's going to cross it no matter what, even if nobody's there. And at that point... It was point, the same with... Uh, he had two shots, and I believe the second one. We had possession. We were moving the ball fine. He had uh, three guys in front of him. And instead of like, oh, okay, like I'm not going to get at this. Let me just try and find a pass back out real quick. Quick, we'll reset the offense. He just tried. He ripped the shot into the three defensive wall in front of him. Yeah. And I'm just like, what are you and doing, like, man? I just, it feels like that they were told, like, go on the counter and hit quickly. And it's like, no, like you can hold that ball back, bring the midfielders into play, kick it around a few times, try to find some holes, get some runs. Now, once again, we haven't shown we have any ability to score against any sort of set defense. Uh so I get maybe why we want to rush the shots, but yeah, it seems like the, the number one instincts always go shoot, shoot. And it's never just like, okay, it's, they've got numbers on us here. Let's pull it back. Let's, let's drag some of our players into this play. 
And it kind of looks like that's what they've been instructed because of how often, like, our midfielders don't come charging up. Like, at this point, I'm starting to wonder, like, what's on them? What's part of the plan? Um, I do want to be another positive player we ripped on a little bit here, but Kubo was also very good to me in this game on my rewatch. Oh, he's he he was my he was my player of the game for this match. Yeah, so his ability to make slide tackles from behind and win nothing but ball is starting to actually like really impress me. Like it kind of sinks. He's trailing sometimes, but like usually he's running back into the play and comes flying in and makes very precise tackles. Like he's starting to look like. It's unfortunate he's had to get put into a role he didn't know, but he's starting to look pretty good in that role. I'm not going to say he is good, but that's not his fault. You know, you know what I mean? Like he, yeah. he's getting better. Um, and honestly, I think if he was well, if he was the weak link of our midfield, it'd be a fine midfield. But yeah, I agree. And one thing that you and I had touched on since match day one with him was like, oh, we're getting a little frustrated with just the fact that he always looks back first. He always looks back. That has progr mm -hmm. progressively and progressively gotten better. It, and I noticed it, maybe it was because I had nothing else. Like when I was watching this, it was like my full, full, full focus was on this. Uh, so I wa So <laughs> I guess I should preface that with, uh, I already told I already told everyone, like I, I stayed home and I watched Chelsea and Champions League. I, you know, that's my squad. Um, and as Nick kind of alluded to, but we actually didn't really talk on. So anyone that has to stream the broadcast, which I do from fccincinnati.com, the first 30 minutes were out. And I pretty much just kind of gave up on it after that and just started watching Chelsea and Champions League. So when I actually did rewatch this, I was like, I just had nothing else to focus on. And that was one of the things I focused on was, all right, like, what are you doing, Kubo? Like, let's see how you do. And I mean, he looked really good with almost every time the ball was at his feet. He looked up first. And then decided what to do, but it was always up first. And his passes forward were really, really, really good this match. Kubo impressed. For how bad our midfield honestly looked this match, which is weird because Alan Cruz also had a really good game. It, it it's one of those things that they almost like it's not their fault. Yeah, how bad it, they looked. I, it I almost put it was the down to like, how we got worked in the middle of the park on to how we lined up in that first half. Yeah, like because honestly, I think the second half was more fifty fifty. Uh, like out of the well, when Barrial came in, we actually just looked better in general. Yeah, in fact, as a New team. England was starting to sit back a little bit then. Uh, Barrial yeah. though, in that second half, was putting in some fantastic balls over the top, which is why I think one of the issues right now with this formation is that if we play the two up top and Lakati is in, that Barrial is not on the field. Um, which is why I keep harping for the three four one two and Barrial at the right wing and just live with the defensive issues there. I think, like I said, if you tweak it, it works better, but you want your best talent on the field and he's arguably the best talent on the field by just play so far this year. I mean, he's up yeah, there with I Lucho know, and then overall Madarita, um, and Cameron at this point, I put up there despite some lapses. We can talk, I'll go through. Uh, this was his worst match. So Even then, I didn't think the, it was, the three I didn't us. think it was bad. Like he made some really big challenges. Yeah. Um, lost a man, kind of got out of position on that set piece though there was one in the second half where i think he just got frustrated with how he couldn't move the ball <laughs> he got the turnover and just started taking it himself and i was like well hopefully this doesn't get turned over because now we're short of center back but i appreciated what he was doing there because i think he just got sick of not no. being able to get the ball out of that out of our back and board. honestly with the way this formation is set up we need the center backs to be willing to drive that ball to give lucho time to get into the middle of the field because with lucho on the left again like we always look for him as our outlet but if he's on the left he gets the ball with his back on the touch line and it just limits his options because anytime he's in the yeah. middle of the park good things happen like i've got here later it's obviously not as good but that second half where he played a one-two with Lacadia, then immediately a one-two with Brenner, and almost pulled off that little back heel over himself. Like if that thing would have ended up in a shot and gone in, it'd be Sports Center number one for the entire month in my mind. It was beautiful combination play. It was probably our my favorite offensive highlight of this game, which is we played two one-twos off of two forwards who knew exactly what to do and where to give him the ball, and he just kept making his run, and it almost ended up in just another one of those Lucho moments of brilliance um so and once again it's unfortunate we're starting to see this kind of now out of lacadia considering he's 
we don't know, but I'm still just assuming he's gone at the end of the month. Yeah. Unless we worked out some sort of super amazing deal. Yeah, what, two matches left, I believe, before the loan's up? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. I think there's two after the break. They're both putting their... Well, what kind of sucks is I believe they're, we have a midweek game that week. So really, it's kind of like one, because it's doubtful you'd see him full-time in both matches. So, Especially if his loan's ending. Uh, and I think that'll actually be an indicator to us, if we don't have news before then, is how much playing time he gets in those final two matches. Because if his loan's going to end, and they want to and Brighton plans on moving him or they have something already, he's not going to yeah, play. Yeah, and I have so. to just assume still, like as we talked about, the decision's already been made. I don't think these last games will probably influence it. If they shouldn't, honestly. Like, it, it would help factor in and be more positive if they decided to keep him. They're probably like, liking what they see. But barring him going on a 20-goal streak in three games, you know, <laughs> like the hottest player in the world. Yeah. Like, I'd... Well, and I don't think it helps his case that Barriel has looked so good. Uh, if, we, if we plan on playing two at the top, because then we could slide Barriel in there. Steve, and I don't like Barriel. Like, I like Barriel, but I don't like when he's stuck playing at the top. Because once again, it's just, he's one of the, it's actually weird. So I don't like when Lucho's stuck on touchline with his back to it, but I, Barriel on the right wing, I think that's how they kind of pictured it with when Lucho's out there. But Barriel on the right wing, has shown such a good ability to cut in and make plays that I prefer him out there in that space instead of having him with his back to goal. He's much better when he already is facing upfield. And I just don't want to kind of... I feel like if we play him up top, we're limiting... We're playing another one of our good players out of position. Like we, And it's just become a, a habit with this team, and it's an awful one because we have poor personnel decisions up and down the roster. As we've harped on many a times, it's just... When Barrio comes in and he's able to roam around and find space, which you think he could do up top, but he still looks like he's when he's up top, just. And then we have the issues because then anytime we play long, it doesn't work because Brenner's five nine, like and just physically can't be a target man. Like it, and it's negative to him. He's very good at dropping in. Well, That's why I think him and Lacadi work well because Brenner likes to drop in, get the ball on his feet, and turn. And this was definitely Brenner's best match with us. Yes, I think. I really need, we really need to get him a goal in open field, like open play, even another penalty. Just let yeah. that man score because I, I, he's getting frustrated. You can see it. He's a young player. He wants to yes. make his mark. I, and I get it. And you see it in the second half when he starts ripping those shots from out of the 18 because he hasn't seen the ball in a while. We need to find a way to get him involved. And I think that, yeah. And I think that's going to be back with us switching to more of a 4 3 3 or a more offensively oriented. Three, four, one, two, three, four, three. Whatever formation you want to you want to go with there, uh, but it needs to end up with Brenner getting more touches in the box and not dropping in a midfield to get it because he's good at that. And but he needs to get rewarded for that work. Is my kind of opinion. Yeah, like he he comes in and does the dirty work, challenges, kind of gets back on plays. Man needs some reward. Yeah. All right. So you had, you have some. Uh, stills you wanted to throw yeah, up? we can flip over to them and just kind of run through them here. Uh, first one I had uh, was just a really nice... Well, as I come in here at the 33rd minute, let's point that out of the game, there will be no images from before of the Lacadia <laughs> shots as we were talking. Uh, but 34th here, we were talking about Kubo. He kind of got out of pressure here, turned, looked upfield, played an amazing ball over the top. This is going to be the first year, a little bit of a Kubo love fest here, but and that was that was actually his second, if I distinctly remember, mm -hmm. of the match. The first one was the one where you obviously couldn't get a still, but it was on Lakadia's second shot where he would tried to go upper ninety. Cuba had done another over the top beautiful pass to Lucho. Mm -hmm. uh, so and yeah. the reason why all Cuba, all Cuba loved and you this can kind of see here why I think the offense like, worked well in this stretch. Lucho's in the middle of the park, so he has to get marked. Kubo is able to kind of come in and find some space. You've got guys running free at the back line. You even see Jao kind of peeking up there at the top of the screen in space. So even if this ball wasn't on and this run wasn't happening, Kubo could have flipped the field. I get as to Jao, but it's still kind of where you want guys on the field in spaces that are dangerous. So that was kind of nice to see. Like I said, this was the 20th to about 35th, kind of the best stretch, I think, of the game. Obviously, in the second half, we were putting some shots on, but New England bunkered a little bit after the goal. Um, we weren't able to get them off that hill. See, I told you I'd slip in bunker and hill in the same time. Yeah, that's good. 
All right. So next That's one good. here, uh, as we were talking about Kuba making huge tackles, this is one he comes back. Jao gets kind of just turned, run silly around. And Kubo comes sliding in here right at the edge of the 18. Just great tackle. Like, like I said, Kubo, fantastic this game in my mind. Mm -hmm. I agree. This one here is just uh, kind of we let Carlos Hill be wide open at the top of the 18, which this is the one player on their team you don't want to leave open at the top of the 18. And he rips a shot and Vermeer makes a nice diving save. I guess we can talk about that. Carlos Hill really didn't do much this game. I think... He didn't, he didn't have, have to. to. Yeah, the, the game plan was not for Carlos Hill to make magic, but he was also on that right side going at Moderita and Lucho all day. And like I said, they that that right flank for New England, our left, was just kind of where everything pretty much came from, and then right at the top of the box, well, we, too. And we made Buchanan look like a much better... Not that he's not a good player, but we made him look like a much better player than I think he is. I think he's, he's young. The young Canadian. I, I'm not... Yeah, uh, he's good. But we made him look a lot better than he currently is right now. Yeah, I'm on the still, so they can't see me shaking my head a little bit. I have a pretty high opinion of <laughs> Buchanan. I think he's super talented and is probably is not long for this league. So we might be able to agree agree to disagree a bit on him. I think. Well, I said now. Yeah, I'm saying he's not he consistently as good as he is this game. I should, I I'll agree with you on that. He's still young, so obviously he goes through yeah. those ruts. But this is kind of why he's going to be maybe one of those young internationals well canadian uh international already but that probably ends up in a, a better league here sooner rather than later uh next one here another one of these sliding somehow behind never touches the player wins the ball kubo tackles i man's fantastic at him and just getting better so nice to see him at least being able to win these challenges it's always nice that he's like i said kind of running from behind but at least he's kind of getting himself back into the play and stopping this attack it will bite us once this season though oh yeah for sure it's gonna the, <laughs> like, one time this season it's gonna bite us really bad when he whiffs yeah i i i, I, I can't argue with that uh, this well, it just happens. Yeah. So this next one here is just kind of a nice transition moment. You have Lakati Brenner top of the box, Lucho cutting in from the left. I think this is Kubo with it again. Still is a little blurry. The the stream website is not the highest of quality on here, but kind of looks sees where everyone is and just reads that Jow's running right into space on the right here. Once again, wish it was someone better getting the ball at this point, but plays it exactly where you should. That leads to a cross, and I'm pretty sure just gets deflected back out, but. It was the right read. We kind of, at least I will give this to Jao. He knows how to get forward. It just nothing usually comes of it. Like, I, I, like I'm glad he makes the runs that he should and he isn't back because we need him to be there to stretch the team. I just wish he was our backup right wing back at this point instead of the starter. Uh, Just next one. Poor defense off a corner kind of all day. Kind of played this one out. Ends up with a wide open shot at the top of the 18 that I'm pretty sure just, I can't remember if Ramir deflects this one over or it just skies over, it gets blocked. But just off a corner, man completely unmarked top of the 18 with the free shot. And you could have made this, this could have been any point in the game with a guy unmarked at the top of the 18, ripping a shot in at goal. But it's just one that caught my eye, especially because I believe this one was right at the end of the first half. So we have a habit of looking real poor for about the last five minutes, and it's going to bite us probably at least a couple more times this season. So we just look like we're out of gas. Uh, this other one, you can kind of see here, uh, balls kind of crossed in here, and there's a deflection. But the issue is that's Books is wide open by himself. Jow, instead of, he goes out to mark uh, their left, wing i forget who was at left wing at this point i think it was the substitution and like they're kind of pointing but cameron and viasi are both late to get back and cover and we're lucky this was a deflection that books is just kind of can't get his feet out from under him and he just kind of kicks it wide is our center backs kind of once again both of them got caught up field kind of ball watching and that's becoming a nasty habit for this team uh that you hope gets cleaned up with time but like one's young one's older you kind of hope somewhere in the middle they meet with the experience. Uh, this one's kind of the give and go I was talking about. It's This is right before this is the Costa just played the ball in. The Katia plays it back, and Brenner reads it, steps in front of his man there, 
pass pass ends up with that back heel just wanted to point out one of the nice actually good combinations of touches we actually had on the offensive side of the field uh, next one oh the uh thing that led to the goal here uh poor defending was what led to that goal that we gave up that set piece uh kubo let him get turned on the touchline which you can't do this was kubo's worst yeah moment. but also <laughs> i think he thought Moderita was going to be there. If that sounds strange, like, which seems strange, like, yeah, like whatever you put your foot there and you, if he gets around you, you're getting megged and you still put a body between him and the ball. Cause Moderita went out to kind of be the wide man in case he cut back the other way. And that was just unfortunate because you give Carlos Hill a lot of dead ball chances, which we did this game with the amount of corners serves one up. And then we've already kind of looked at it here, but just the unmarked guys on the corners, three bodies go up basically uncontested and it's just leads to an open header and Buxos was all over the box today i'll give him credit he got i think he got on the end of about four or five crosses like i said he it, and they were all they were all yeah. close there wasn't really one that was not like ooh. <laughs> like it, you know the depth perception especially on tv was it, they all looked very good yeah. uh this one's 74th minute it's kind of pointed out ball get this ball was like skied it made pretty much just like a arc and was coming straight down right before this. You see Jow, he's just like tilting his head back, looking at the ball and then loses track of the man. And then just lets the guy bring it down and t run right around him into the box. Like I said, I'd get mad at Jow when he starts making the same mistakes again and again. This is one of those where you just can't get beat there in the air, especially because it was a transition moment. So your center backs are still trying to get back into position. The midfield still kind of dragged. You get beat there. There's no one really there to cover for you, and we're lucky that didn't lead to another another goal. Uh, this one was just Vasquez had a really nice shot when he came in that Matt Turner made a fantastic save on. I want to shout out Vasquez actually looked solid in the, what, nine minutes he got, was kind of made some plays, was actually able to bring a couple of balls down and lay them off, hold them up pretty well. Yeah. So probably his best sub cameo of the season, I guess I was a camp. Ate on him too much, only coming in eight minutes a game, but he looked really, really good coming into this one. And frankly, if Lakati is gone, he might get see some more minutes up there in that kind of target man role. Yeah, well, and you know, you got to take advantage of every minute you can get. And I really, really thought he did that this yeah. match. Normally, I think he comes in um, and, and he runs off sides three times, and I'm just like, why are you in here? Well, and so this is couch quarterbacking here on me, uh, but. The one where he legit had the goal shot. I thought he should have gone. Did you think he should have gone far? Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, we had not talked about that, but once again, that's, you know, we're not there sitting in that moment and, you know, he's on there for five minutes at that point and rips a shot. But yeah, the defender, there are no defenders I, back. If you would have just tilted that left. So where I have the still, there is a defender in front of him then. So I think he thought if he went near post, there's less chance of this getting blocked and a better chance of him maybe able to sneak it under. Matt Turner's, as we've talked in our pre-match, yeah, probably second best shot stopper, arguably the best shot stopper in MLS if you are part of the analytics. Uh, Matt Turner for best goalkeeper of all time community. So I can't really, <laughs> I can't really argue with his decision here. Like I think he no, thought no. that guy might have been closer and just try to put want something on frame and hope something good happens and can't really hate on that. And we'll go to my last one here. Uh, as oh, on that still, I don't know where your still is at. Who who kicked the ball? Was it Brenner? I think it was Barrial. Do Vasquez? Yes. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'm just gonna give it to Barrial because my next one's one of the balls Barrial put over the top that Lacati gets on the end of, but can't sort his feet and just kind of mishandles it, which was unfortunate because as all this game, his first touch off of these long balls was pretty. Pretty fantastic, but you can't even see on this one. Barrio's not even in this picture. He's out back in midfield and just loops one right over the top to a sprinting Lacadia, who I said gets a touch on it, but it's just it's a sloppy one and kind of spills out and nothing comes of it. But I just wanted to give a little shout out to one of the Barrio because he had multiple ones in the last twenty minutes. He was in just crosses, flipping the field, doing anything you could really ask of a late substitution. So. I just wanted to throw yeah. something from there that I saw in one, one of his crosses and trying to find one with him in the picture just didn't work because of how far he was playing those. Was that? Yeah, that was. You get through your. Yeah, those, the, that's the end of uh, Nick's highlights of the game. What stood out to him. 
Yeah, no, I like it. Uh, all right, so I'll do this then. Give me one. So we have an international break now. So we have, what, I think two and a half weeks before the next match, maybe a little under two and a half. What's well, one thing from these first few matches of the season, I mean, just one, that you want to see progress starting after the international break? It's hard to pick one. So I'm like, just right. one big thing you want to see progress. I'd probably like... It could be a player. It could be, you know, you've touched on uh, players out of position. Maybe that changes. Like, just any one. But it only has to be one. you got to pick one. That's the hard part. I'd honestly want to see us coming out of the break back into the 4-3-3. As much as that okay. means possibly having to bench Lacadia with how well he's playing, I think with our personnel, we need to make that formation work. And honestly, I'd prefer to see the as I keep talking about the three four one two and just roll it out there and see what happens for a game or two. I I don't think it'll happen, but that that's to be my that's my pipe dream one here. Uh, so formation, I'd like to see us come back in the four three three and definitely try to be more involved in the game, uh, possession wise and everything like that. Let's see. Ooh, I want to kind of give like a player one. I'd like to see just someone be able to get Brenner some consistent service. So this is more of a Brenner, more of a team. You can take whatever one you want. I think we need to do anything we can to make sure he gets the ball somewhere inside the 18. I don't really care who does it, obviously. I think it would be Lucho or Barrial. But I think those three need to figure out what they need to do to get on the same page to get us better goal-scoring opportunities. Because, again, this game... We had a couple chances inside the box, and most of them were long-range rips that really nothing came of. We need more consistent opportunities closer to goal, basically. Yeah. All right. Great. But, I yeah. was just curious if you could pull out, yeah, you know, one thing out of that. Uh... A whole new team. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll turn it on to you. What, what's one thing you want to see 619? Let's just say 619 against Colorado. Um, who is? We'll talk about them when we do our preview and. Two weeks? And yeah. Preview for them. They're a solid team. I think it'll be another good test, and I'm a little afraid we'll come park the bus against them, but they're very sound defensively, have some players now that everyone there is healthy. So I'm curious to see how we come, but is it, what what would you like to see out of that game besides a win? Um, uh, One thing I'd like to see, regardless of if we know what's happening with Lakati or not, is Barrial at least go back to his, like, 65, 70 minutes? I thought he was playing too well. I understand why we did the change. And we were even asking for a lineup or a formation change, not necessarily Bar Barrial, but the 4-3-3 hadn't been working, and then the 5-3-2 worked for a game and then didn't work for another game. Um, but I think we need to find a spot for Barrial regardless because right now he is – right now he's our only true – offensive threat consistently consistently Lacadia's has looked good the past two matches lucho i'm happy yeah. with him it's just i don't like, think we're doing him any favors playing the five three two that's that's it's more yes it's once again it's a team thing it's not a him thing uh same with like how we both thought as good as cruz and kubo looked this match the midfield was awful but it's not really their fault it's kind of that same thing but you just you can't take out your most consistent good offensive player this season. Now not to, that's not to say obviously Brenner's probably the most talented. Lacati has looked best the past two matches, but over all the matches so far this season, the only one that's been consistent is Barrial. Actually, I want to say that one player I don't think we actually mentioned this game. What did you think of Stanko? Eh, he was fine. Like I'd like to see better passing from a midfielder playing center back. Yeah, but I still think he's we're, he's he's doing what we're asking him to do. He's just not doing anything better than what we're asking him. Yeah, to and do. as we kind of touched on last week, how that we it was noted. I forget where we I pulled it from that he we switched into that four three three. It's the same thing we did this game, so it looks like that was a plan change in mind at some point. And that's all well and good, but I. I yeah. yeah so, uh, for for anyone just listening, he's he's shrugging his shoulders, which is the same thing yeah, I like, did. It's just 
He's fine. Like, I mean, I don't. I don't think he's really hurting us. He's just not helping yeah, us either. Yeah, uh, I would. I'm curious if we ever take my suggestion to put Barrial at the wing back and let him play more midfield and up, and then if he would still be that right center back, or if we put more of a true defender back there. Uh, maybe put Hagelin in the middle, Cameron out at right center back because he's got a little more. I don't know. I, I I don't know how I wing on that one. Or if we put like Pedersen at left center back and then put Biasia out there on the right since he's a little pacier. I think we have some options for it. Which is why I keep asking for it because I think I'd rather just see it and us get beat five nothing and then everyone can I can just shut up about it. But I think it's the at least old... you would know your answer. Yeah, uh, but I just think it puts our players in better positions yeah. offensively defensively it could get a little wonky if people don't know their assignments because you got to really rely on people knowing where they need to get back and track back to and which is an issue for this this mm -hmm. squad yeah but, no i get you uh so yeah international break so no fcc matches until june 19th against colorado uh, i will be there this time so. At least I plan. I, you never know what's going to happen in two. Yeah. I don't want to curse anything. You know, knock on wood. I'll be there. Um, all right. No rants. So any, any, no rants, any, uh, any parting shots. Oh, do we want to do a men's national team one next week? So we have the, they play tomorrow uh, for the first leg or for the first uh, match in the semis for mm -hmm. Nations League. Do we want to do like a, review next since there's no fcc we'll do a review yeah because they same play time. what tomorrow and then the final is on sunday yes yeah i, I could come Let's on and talk us and men's national team we're gonna hit on that real yeah. quick a little disappointed with the game against switzerland uh not a lot of great yeah. performances out there but i think we tried some stuff uh, and then i hopefully... well, and we talked about it we, we watched it together and as as much as like a lot of the players there, the guys are like, okay, these are the guys I want to see come, you know, 2022 World Cup, 2026 World Cup, hopefully, because they're all young. Uh, we're still, you know, Pulisic wasn't there. Stefan wasn't there. Tyler Adams is out. That's the one. So we're still, we yeah, have no, that's your guy. Like Pulisic, as amazing as he is, we have capable players on the wings that can step in. We yeah. have no one in the player pool that can, we have no one in the player pool that can do what Pulisic does, but we have better players that can, give you an imitation of what he can do. We have no one that can do what Tyler Adams does. The amount of ground yeah, he right. covers and passes he can play in a common. Yeah. yeah. So, and Tyler Adams won't be playing. He's just not with the team. Uh, but I would assume we should see. Pulisic. Berhalter already said he'd start. I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Horvath looked pretty good for Stefan though. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that was considering. I we hadn't seen much of Horvath. I was pretty impressed with how he did. Made a couple big saves on Embolo, one with his face, one pretty much the same play later. Uh, we got abused down that their right side, our left, when Dest was upfield. John Brooks just doesn't have the pace to cover for him. So I'm curious yeah. to see the adjustments we make. Probably nothing against Honduras, who we play tomorrow. Yep. Um, don't think we should have issues with Honduras. This shouldn't be like a, I think, the Olympics. Anyone... <laughs> And we're knocking on wood again. No, Anytime afraid. you think that, though. No, I mean, honestly, if we have issues with Honduras, I'm not sure how much longer Burhalter has a job. I'm going to be afraid. I think the expectations are at high already. If he does poorly and we get blown the doors off or something like that, there should be no reason. Well, like, like, no, no. In, in, in this Nations League, so the, the Switzerland game was just a friendly. Mm -hmm. In the Nations League, you're literally missing Tyler Adams from what should be your A team. Mm -hmm. So, no, there's no excuse. Um, but, okay. This is this is not <laughs> a U.S. men's yeah, national team podcast. I'll come back and rant next we week ranted. if we lose to Honduras. Yeah. So, uh, for anyone that's interested, uh, look for a. It probably won't be a long episode, but kind of look for a Nations League review episode for the team next week. Uh, week after that, I could just pull up a calendar in front of the me. The week after that, we'll, we'll have, have our a preview, preview for Colorado. Yeah, well, okay, we'll have the preview for Colorado up. So one episode the next two weeks. Only one episode this week because there's nothing to preview. Uh, okay. Any actual last parting shots? No rants. I'm I'm done. I, I I'm ready okay. to talk about men's national teams. So we just gotta stop now. Yeah, exactly. All right, that'll be next week. So thanks for listening to another episode, guys. Uh, we'll hopefully take a listen to us next week. Talk about the U.S. men's U.S. men's national team. All right. Have a good one, Cody. See ya.